<laughs> Can we teach ourselves soccer skills? Can't use your hands! Great. Hang on, on for the loop! Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And as we grow, we are updating our maturity. And today we want to talk about updating our spiritual maturity. Yeah, it's like we're uh, letting you drive the car. We're letting you use the grill on your own. We're uh, giving you the keys to the tractor. We're letting you watch your younger siblings. We're letting you fly the plane. Why are all of yours transportation based? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, but what we're trying to say is that we trust you to own your spiritual growth. Take your faith and make it your own. Yeah, here's some more about that. If Andy can have an older boy as a friend, then nobody can call him baby anymore. So he asks Fred to come and see his tadpoles. He has two live ones. Here's Andy with Fred. And here are Andy's tadpoles. See? Oh, they're dead. Now Andy remembers he hasn't thought to feed them for many days. And that was one of his responsibilities. What's up, guys? I'm hanging out outside on my back porch. It's a little bit cold, but I got a fire pit going. You might hear that popping. I love hanging out back here and just relaxing, even when it's cold. And I was thinking to myself, you know what doesn't do well in the cold or in the fire? Tadpoles. Tadpoles don't do well in the cold, I don't think. I'm pretty sure they don't. That's good. Is it too soon to make tadpole jokes? I mean, we just watched the video, but it's an old video. The tadpoles are totally fine um, in the sense that they're gone and dead. But you know, you get what I'm saying, right? They're, they're, they'll be okay. So anyways, as I was thinking about that, I also thought to myself, if I had tadpoles, let's say I had some precious tadpoles that I really loved and you're my friend and I'm going on vacation and I asked you, will you please watch my tadpoles for me? And you're like, yeah, man, I'm your best friend. I'll do anything for you. And I'm like, you're the best, thank you. And so I leave to my tropical island for vacation and then you're supposed to take care of my tadpoles and you forgot. And so then I, I get home and my tadpoles are dead and you're like, I'm sorry, I forgot it was my mom's fault, right? Like, would you be able to do that? Could you put that off on your mom or on your siblings? No, you couldn't, right? Because it wasn't their fault. It was your responsibility to watch my tadpoles, right? It was on you. And the same thing is true about our relationship with God. It's on us. Growth is our responsibility. And it's so important that we own it. If we wanna get closer in our relationship with Jesus, mature in our relationship with Jesus and know him better, we have to to own that. You guys are in a season of life that you're starting to be given more responsibility. It could be that, hey, you are expected to do your schoolwork when you get home from school and get it done before tomorrow. You have chores that you're supposed to make sure that you get done. But another one of those things is that you are also supposed to own your relationship with Jesus. Check out what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Such a great reminder for us to know. It doesn't matter how old we are. It is on us, and it's important for us to know that we have to own our relationship with Jesus. One way to grow what you know is by teaching yourself. And the other way is to find a guide or a mentor. And to put this to the test, for the last week, I've been teaching myself soccer skills oh, by using YouTube <laughs> articles or whatever I could find myself. Okay, so I didn't know that, but now I'm going to have 30 minutes to learn the same skills with our soccer coach, Steven. Bring it on! Now, I did not grow up playing a lot of soccer. I tried soccer and made a goal for the other team. I did the same thing, but with basketball. So oh. I'm bad at most sports. Yeah. Bring it on! I need to learn about soccer. Now I'm going to watch some videos to figure out how to actually play it with, with my human feet. All right, Loopsters, so we were going to be learning some soccer skills outside, but it's raining, so we're headed down indoors to meet up with my soccer coach, Steven. Things I've learned so far. The soccer appears to be all about just kicking a ball really hard, but it's has more to do with having controlled contact with the ball. And so I have to practice. I, I mean, I could keep on watching videos, but it looks like I really need to put observation into action. Steven, hello. Hey. 
I'm Jamie. I'm Steven. I heard we are going to be working on some dribbling. Yes. Passing. Yes. And some shooting. Yes. Okay, let's Good see job. what you got. Sports. Ooh. Okay, so soccer ball has been obtained. There it is. And now I'm going to do some soccer drills. Uh, I looked up a couple online, uh, and one is called Inside Outs. And I think another one is called Toe Touches, or Toe Taps. Toe. We'll call them Toe Touches for now. And we are going to work on some dribbling. OK. Oh. OK. The goal when you're dribbling, you want to use the insides of your foot. So it keeps it close to your body. OK. And it makes it easier to dribble for. So okay. let's see what you got. We'll be going to the right, the left of the cones, kind of swerving them around. OK. And then when you're going to the right, you'll be using your left foot. Okay. Going to the left, you'll be using your right foot. OK. And then you kind of just swerve in between it. OK. I made it up to 20. Yeah. Now let's try to speed it up a yes. little bit okay. more and see what you got. <laughs> okay, speeding it up, speeding, speeding it up. up. That's speeding good. It up, okay. It up. Ah! <laughs> my my shoes are squeaking, so that means I'm athletic, right? That's exactly what that <laughs> means. Awesome. Now we can try the same thing. Let's try to use the outsides of our foot. This one's a little bit harder. So right foot to the right. Okay. Left foot to the left. You're ah! Ah! Back, back. <laughs> so and you're doing good avoiding the cones. That might be a little bit too far. <laughs> okay, more into like the the singing and dancing. So I think we can move on to the passing drill. Bring it on, Steven. Bring it on. Uh, soccer is difficult. Uh, there is so much more technique that goes into just kicking a ball than I was expecting. You'll go to one side of the cone. Okay. Pass it back. Okay. Swerve back around. Okay. And then pass it back. Awesome. Go, 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 go. You got it. Ah, speed, 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 speed. Oh, I like the speed, except <laughs> I kicked it. Ah. Left foot. Ah. Right foot. Ah. Left foot. Ah. Jamie. Ah, uh, yes. That better. was awesome. <laughs> okay, the improvement is there. Now are you ready for shooting? Ooh, uh, that was good. Yeah, I at least got two in. That was two. Yes, I'm ready for shooting. So I realized something I do. My feet movement has been like super loosey. I think if I have a little bit of a firmer foot, I should be able to control it a little bit better. So basically, <laughs> you're going to want to use the bottom of your lace right here. Got it. So you're going to want to point your foot down, okay. kind of diagonal. And then, like you said, follow through the ball. And what's the most important rule? Uh, have fun. You blast it. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the soccer videos that I watch recommend uh, practicing around cones. I don't have cones. But I have hats. So I'm going to make an obstacle course with a bunch of hats. Oh, this is difficult. So one thing, there's a little fancier. Yes. Almost kind of a dance style. OK. So you <laughs> dance around the ball with your right foot. Yes. And then you cut to the left with your left foot. It's like a jazz soccer square. Around, around. here, plant and kick. OK. I don't know about you, but I think Ricky might be a little scared when he yeah. sees all these all these skills right here. That's true. He's not going to do the, the dancing trick. <laughs> around and this way and plant and kick. So good. So around and this way and no, nope, no, nope. yes. <laughs> so good. No one can be good at first. It just takes a lot yeah. of practice. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. As you grow in maturity, people will put you in charge of more things. Some of those things will be fun, and some of those things will be stinking tough. You might be able to relate to a young man named Timothy. Timothy grew up with an incredible mentor named Paul. You've probably heard of Paul. He's credited with writing a good chunk of what we call the New Testament in the Bible. In the early days of Christianity, he traveled over 10,000 miles to spread the news of Jesus and start new communities of Jesus' followers. He was kind of a big deal. Paul met Timothy in a city called Lystra. Timothy was a rookie with a reputation for studying scripture. 
Paul was a legend with a reputation for facing deathly danger with unbelievable courage. Paul invited Timothy to travel with him on his mission. He became Timothy's wise and trusted guide. They ate together, they prayed together, and they cried together as they spread the good news of Jesus. And then one day, Paul found out that a church he had started in Ephesus was out of control. Instead of going to see them himself, Paul sent Timothy to be in charge. Timothy felt way in over his head. He was sent to be the example for a bunch of older leaders who were acting immature and teaching false ideas. Who was he to set them straight? And his guide wasn't there to guide him. So what did Tim do? Uh, he gave up and went home. The end. Just kidding. Just when he wanted to give up, he got a letter from Paul. Even though Paul wasn't with him, he still sent some encouragement. We don't have to guess what Paul said. We have copies of his letters and we can read them anytime we're tempted to give up. We call them the books of 1st and 2nd Timothy. Paul writes to Timothy, Dude, I know you. You've got this. Who cares how old you are? Show them what it looks like to really follow Jesus with what you say and do. Jump in feet first. Good mentors like Paul can relate their experience to our current situation. They pray for us. They know where we come from. They know our fears. And they always point us toward Jesus and the Holy Spirit. When you're learning something new, look for a wise and trusted guide. Timothy had a great example, so he could be a great example. Hey guys, so I have a question for you. Has anyone ever described you as being very mature for your age? Okay, now, who has been called immature for their age? Come on, put them up, don't lie. <laughs> So we know the concept of maturity, but do we know what maturity actually means? So maturity is defined as the state, fact, or period of being mature. How defining. <laughs> With that one not being as helpful as we need it to be, I found another definition. And it's the psychology version of maturity, but that one's really long and I don't wanna take the time to say it. <laughs> so me needing to kind of shorten things up in order for me to understand things, I created my own definition. So maturity is basically this, choosing the right way to behave based on the environment that you're in. To give an example, the way that you act at school or in a library is so much different than how you would act at a friend's house or maybe at recess. The thing about maturity is that it is not attached to your age. You are not too young to be responsible for your own own growth. Likewise, you are not too young to set an example for other people. It's just like what Paul says in his letter that he wrote to Timothy. This comes from 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are too young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct in love and faith and in purity. Because if you update your speech and conduct and set the example, people will see you mature right before their eyes. But the way that you set the example all depends on your spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity happens when we choose to grow in wisdom. But here's the thing. There's a difference between being an example and showing off. Spiritual maturity is not puffing yourself up and saying that you're better than everyone else. The Pharisees were really good at this. In the book of Matthew, they were bragging about how well they knew the Bible and how great that they were praying. And of course those are great things, but they were doing it for the wrong reasons. The Pharisees are what Jesus called hypocrites. They were hypocrites because they were teaching the word of God, but they weren't taking it all in themselves. To give you a better example, let's say that I just keep telling you, hey man, you need to brush your teeth like all the time because it's how you keep your teeth clean and blah, 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 and you should do it two times a day. And I just, I just, my whole purpose in life is just to tell you how good you need to clean your teeth. And then a little while later, we're having a conversation and then all of a sudden you get punched in the face with my breath stank. Like it is stanky, like it is repulsive. It is peeling the wallpaper out of the walls that the room that we are currently in while we're having this conversation. And then you're like, wait a minute, didn't you just say that I needed to like brush my teeth like all the time? That is an example of a hypocrite. So back to what we were saying, 
you need to practice what you preach. So the point of that story is to illustrate why you shouldn't be hypocritical. Because the Pharisees were hypocrites and they were just showing off and they were not setting the example. So don't be like the Pharisees and be hypocrites. Grow what you know without the show. So that's all I have for you guys today. And I want you to remember that you are responsible for your own spiritual maturity. And you can use that spiritual maturity in order for you to get closer to God and even help people get closer to God. And you can do that by setting the example. So we've been doing our practicing. Jamie mm -hmm. and I pretty much became experts. True. I heard that <laughs> Ricky's been doing some practicing of his own. Yes, yeah. I have. And now it is time to shine, time to show him what we got. Yay! All right, let's go. Dribble. Okay. Oh, I did the outside, I did the outside. Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Yes. You got it. Probably could do it a little bit faster. And we are out. Wasn't bad. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's fast. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Devilish defender. <laughs> that was good. We got speed and we got control. Together, we make a half decent soccer player. Hooray. Yay. Okay, Jamie, this was your specialty, the yes, teamwork. Yes, might have been. Okay, all right. So, so around. So remember and the right and, foot. Okay. The left foot. Yeah. Oh, ah! And going around. And left foot. Okay. Oh, shoot. I did a circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did, I did a version of this, except um, my fence doesn't kick back. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good, Ricky. Very Thank good. Thank you. Good job. 10 Woo! out of 10. Hey! 10 yeah. out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here it is. So out and this way and laces. Nice. Yeah, there we go. I didn't learn any crossover moves, so I'll just do uh, this. Yes. Oh. That was very blasty. Yeah. That was very good. Thank you. The goal is doing a little dance. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> goal. Yeah. All right. So around, and we're going to go this way, and I'm going to do this. What am I going to do, goalie? What am I going to do? <laughs> Man, I'm so not prepared for this because I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't prepared for, like, a human <laughs> element. Okay, here we go. A human <laughs> element. <laughs> yeah. The goalie was like, That one was a little scary, a little <laughs> yeah. close. Uh, that was really fun getting to learn something new. Listen, I have been intimidated by soccer for many a year, yeah. and that was actually very fun. One benefit, I think, by having a guide or a coach here with me was that I had somebody to kick the ball back and forth with, and if I had any specific questions, I was able to ask him. And he was also very, very encouraging. Yeah, I mean, I definitely learned just from watching you learn. Teaching myself, I just had to assume um, that I was doing something right, but I also knew that there was some kind of gap I didn't know how to get there. So there wasn't that feedback, but the benefit is that I got to try a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I think that helped me use some with my handles. <laughs> try this maturity update. Be the example. Show people what spiritual maturity looks like no matter how old you are. Put what you know into practice. Set yourself apart from what's popular or what the world says matters. When they look at you, they'll see someone who is humble, someone who serves others, someone who genuinely loves others. They'll see someone reflecting God and maturing right before their eyes. Even we need guys to help us mature in our spiritual lives. And as you gain more responsibility, remember the most important growth is in your relationship with God. And you don't need to wait for permission to be an example. Be like Timothy, start mm -hmm. your update today. Grow what you know without the show. And thank you to Stephen for being here today. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Yes, of course. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride! ride. So this challenge reminded me of another really fun challenge that we did called the Speed Drawing Challenge. It was a lot of fun. You're gonna love it. So check out that video and don't forget to subscribe and let us know in the comments what new skills you wanna learn, like uh, mm -hmm. underwater basket weaving, uh, needlepoint, or uh, subscribing to the Loop Show. It's a great skill to have. <laughs>